What is going on, Eye Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about something special, which is coffee intake while intermittent fasting. Now, we all know that the calories are very, very low in coffee, so many people like to utilize coffee as a means to suppress hunger and be a tool for intermittent fasting. But does the research actually show that coffee can have a negative effect on you while utilizing your intermittent fasting regimen? I'm gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Now quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? It's only $16.50 with an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and a swivel design for maximum speed. You can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. The link will be down in the description or you can click on the top right hand corner. And of course, as always guys, thank you for your support now let's go ahead and jump right into the video all right so it's no secret if you've been watching me for two years three years and you've seen any of my videos in which i'm talking about coffee or i'm relating information from intermittent fasting to coffee that i personally do not drink coffee at all i prefer to drink water or carbonated water during my fast as it's the most comfortable for me it's what i prefer it has nothing in it so it gives me more peace of mind it feels unlimited like i can drink it as many times as i want but i've been very fair to coffee i mean i've done a video about why i don't drink coffee not necessarily why you shouldn't drink it but why i just prefer not to drink it because of different things that happen with coffee makers and stuff when you're purchasing coffee outside things like that and if you want to watch it the video's titled why i don't drink coffee on my channel but I'm going to look at the research in terms of is it good to use coffee during your fast? Does coffee break your fast? Which is one very, very important aspect. Now, if we're going based off of calories alone, it doesn't break your fast because there's a very low calorie intake, not enough to go ahead and switch you back from that metabolic switchover, raising your insulin and switching back to using glucose as energy. However, coffee has really unique properties that other beverages don't have. One thing obviously is caffeine. Caffeine is something that is strong as a stimulant that gets metabolized in the liver. It sends all these different hormonal reactions throughout the body. It actually has been shown via multiple studies to provide actual energy boost. So there are positive elements to that. But most of the studies that we have that show the positive push of coffee are epidemiology studies, which is studies of observation studies of looking at particular groups of people and seeing how they turn out especially with type 2 diabetes there are a lot of epidemiology studies that show that coffee can help type 2 diabetes so then you put those things together and you think automatically well if it helps type 2 diabetes and one of the biggest issues with type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity is when you are in that fasted state that elevates insulin sensitivity so then coffee must help me with my fast or it doesn't break my fast at the least as opposed to giving me some sort of a boost at the most but the actual controlled studies, and remember, controlled studies in the pyramid or the hierarchy of studies is much more detailed and can be seen as much more valid information depending on the methodology. But controlled studies are very strong. And most of the controlled studies out there show that there is an acute increase in insulin when coffee is consumed. Published in the American Diabetes Association in 2004, there's a study that actually looked at coffee intake, a controlled study, where they had people who didn't consume coffee and people who did consume coffee, and they saw that insulin sensitivity was lowered in that group. So there was a direct connection to the coffee. However, because it was such a short-term study, they couldn't declare that insulin was affected because of coffee within that study alone but this study did show evidence of that so in 2016 a meta-analysis was done looking at multiple studies only using randomized control studies in that meta-analysis and systematic review and the data search populated seven studies that fit the criteria needed for this meta-analysis for it to be randomized control have a placebo all of these different elements and in that meta-analysis 
analysis, they saw that acute administration of caffeine attenuates insulin sensitivity and attenuates means to lower or reduce. So it actually corroborated that study from back in 2004, looking at multiple different studies, putting them into a meta-analysis. And the results were that yes, there's an insulin sensitivity reduction because of coffee intake. Now, the mechanism of coffee in and of itself has something unique that triggers an insulin response for some reason. Now, it's hard to understand why is it because of the stimulant of caffeine? What is going on there? But another unique study that was done looked at coffee intake and then food intake right after. So the person was fasting, they drank coffee, and then they ate either a high glycemic meal or a low glycemic meal. And they did it as a randomized control setup where they had someone eat a high glycemic meal or a low glycemic meal without drinking coffee. What they noticed was the insulin spike and the blood glucose rise was 40% higher in those who had the high glycemic meal after drinking coffee and even 29% higher for those who had even the low glycemic meal after drinking coffee. So there appears to be something there when it comes to coffee and the hormonal response and how that connects to insulin and unfortunately in a negative way. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, okay, maybe there's something with caffeine. What about decaffeinated coffee? And this is the interesting thing. A study put caffeinated coffee versus decaffeinated coffee versus placebo. So the participants were in a controlled trial. They did not know which one was the caffeinated, decaffeinated, or placebo. With this setup, with this methodology, they noticed that although caffeine had the highest increase in insulin and glucose, decaffeinated coffee had a much higher increase than the placebo for insulin and glucose. So there's something within the element of coffee itself, be it caffeinated or even decaffeinated. Yes, calorie-wise, coffee may not break your fast based off the calorie aspect of it. But is it going to create some type of interruption? It is possible because we have multiple randomized controlled studies as opposed to the epidemiology studies that show that there is a positive element to type 2 diabetes prevention or a battle against type 2 diabetes. But the randomized control trials that's looking directly at coffee consumption versus non-coffee consumption, those studies are showing that there is this acute insulin sensitivity reduction or even a glucose in Increase. And even having glucose increase and insulin secretion going higher simply from drinking coffee before eating any meal, be it low glycemic or even high glycemic versus someone who doesn't drink coffee. Now, do we have long-term studies? We do not. And there are indicators that your body becomes resistant to the stimulants of the coffee. And then at that point, maybe you are not so susceptible to this insulin secretion and the glucose rising and having all of those elements happen. We don't know if after a long period of time, maybe it two years or three years of just drinking coffee, that your body gets so used to it that these responses don't happen. These hormonal responses don't happen as aggressively. But but based on the randomized controlled studies that we do have, there does appear to be some sort of interruption there. So if you drink coffee and you fast, it may not be affecting you much. You may be used to it and it's not going to break your fast or anything like that, but just have some caution. And if worse comes to worse, if you want the most peace of mind, just drink water. All the studies that I just mentioned will be linked in the description below. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here. And of course, as always guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace.